And so they have a, an innate anger and hostility. Uh, that's a big difference. Um, schizophrenia is something that's acquired, and you become ill, so you're healthy at one point, and then autism, you're, you're born this way. And now we have people that have an intake of heavy metals or things such as mercury and a compound called femoral. Now that's very controversial. You, know, you probably heard about Andrew Wakefield, what, what Andrew Wakefield has gone through in his life. Yeah, actually he's a man without a country now. He's, he's not in the UK where he's from, he's in the United States. Uh, he's still fighting the same battle. And it, it's going to be a horrifying revision of health, uh, the health what Obama's trying to do. With, with, uh, all of this is all kind of like folks together. I don't know how they're going to pay back people that have their children receiving the uh, Themerol, uh, it's preservative, right. and it's, it would be in the measles shots, you know, mumps, measles, and rubella. MMR. Oh boy, that's going to be a tough issue to solve. That may never be solved. Yeah. How else can we explain this explosion? Well, I think that, the, the, well, there's two ways. I feel, in my opinion, my humble opinion, I'm not a scientist, and I, I see things through also a little bit shamanic eyes, too, a little bit. I see that uh, mutation occurs always in nature, you look at, examine, uh, you find mutations on leaves and a maple tree. All right, you'll see at the very tips and the edges of the tree, there, there could be a change in the growth pattern. That's usually how it happens. So it is with the human race. I think that in the human race, on the fringe edges, there's changes that take place. And the reason why is to adapt to the next step. What is that? We don't know what that is. But maybe for an adaptation and a need for invention, um, maybe that's what our life is doing, with the life that's coursing through us all, the, how we experience life. Whatever that invisible energy is may cause these mutations. Um, but also, uh, with the, in the case of the ephemeral, the epidemic, we're having an epidemic of autistic children being born. Or they, they, they call them crystal children or indigo children. You know, we've all read about that. Uh, that's actually happening. Uh, part of it could be from the femoral. And part of it is actually a real birth defect. Femoral, the mercury, what it does is insidious because it changes that child's DNA at the age of three. So now they appear to be a birth defect because the DNA shows that. Uh, those genes, um, they look like autism, not, not an acquired illness. That's tragic. When the, something can change your DNA. In the back, anyone? Yes? When you first started getting into artism as a kid, were you more comfortable with geometric shapes rather than free flowing? I think my own. Um, yeah, you were looking at like the organics versus Frank Stella. <laughs> yeah. um, I think that I, I was always loving organic shapes. To me, they represented life, myself personally. And I think maybe other kids, they get into the proportioning and mathematics. Later in life, I've done that. I, I enjoy proportioning. Maybe that stems from doing so much graphic design. I like mathematic formulas in my art. Sometimes the golden mean, golden section, that could occur in music as well as art. Anyone else? Yes? Um, with the, the increase in, in children with autism, there's obviously been, been more awareness uh, lately, but there's I've heard from the community that there's not as much awareness of the fact that autistic children eventually become autistic adults and that they still need support through that, that their caregivers still need support for that. Do you see that like increasing, like more people becoming aware of the adult side of the autism uh, and, and more services and support being provided? 
Well, uh, it's, it, 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 I, I think that that's a trend. Like, I don't think that I'm that outside of the reality of what's the trend. I think that uh, adults are seeking help or finding themselves out. One of the tendencies for the high achieving Aspergers or Tanners, whatever, they commit suicide. There's a tendency. Um, it could be in going through the puberty thing, um, and socializing, trying to socialize, frustration, or and uh, also um, engineering firms. Um, they recognize without really diagnosing you, or they, they, or if you come to them with a diagnosis of Asperger's, they realize right away we can do something with this individual, and we can put him someplace where he's not going to be teased. By um, you know idiots, you know, I, mean, I shouldn't say that. Uh, people that are going to be uh, uh, treating them with malice for being different, you know, and, and, you be, and then they'll find they're going to invent. And uh, Jeremy understands this that you know when, when we go on and on in life, uh, we're the most dependable employee you could ever want. We're, we're, there's no way you're not going to stop us. We're, if we're wound up like this, you go that way. You better tell us to stop because we're going to keep going. And boy, oh boy, the later in life, really, this is kind of funny. Uh, uh, later on in life, there were not very many graphics shops. So I supplemented my income by becoming a loss prevention officer. And in Ohio, we wore a uniform. And I was um, analyzed, uh, I was given doctor's analysis, oh, everything. And uh, the owner of the security company was a police officer, and they gave me a license to carry a firearm. Well, and that's based on based on the fact that I'm steady, that based on the fact of my integrity. Um, that didn't have to, but it put me in, in in public places though it was very dangerous, and I was uh, through willpower, I was able to stop shoplifters and uh, you know bring them to the back of the store and. Uh, you know, with my willpower. Um, so, in other words, we're unstoppable, and we're we're steady employees. We're good at documentation. Um, what else can you want from an employee? But to pass a job interview might be almost impossible. Yes. Uh, to address her question. Yes. Um, there are more things going on for since a lot of young people in the late nineties, you know, and their parents. Had their children now they're growing, it, going to college and things. So there's um, the woman. There's, she does. She's from California. And she's a movie uh, producer. She's working now on making a movie for um, uh, young people for sexuality with autism because they are growing up and they're becoming in relationships and how to deal. So there are people and organizations dealing with you know the up and coming autism and going to college and becoming getting a job and that kind of stuff. So there are organizations working on that. Yeah, there are. That's like um, that's that's coming about. That, uh, yes. I, I just wanted to add. There's a book at the Melbourne Library that I just got. It's wonderful. Asperger's in the workplace. Really. And it's wonderful. And uh, it's it's terrific. It gives you all the job interview hints about eye contact and everything, you know, that, that might go on. And then there is a center at the Scott Autism Center at Florida Tech yes. where they house young people together to give them employment as tour guides and Amazing. all sorts of things here locally at the Scott Center. I didn't know about yeah, that part of the they're, location. They're, they've given uh, local talks to the community. Uh, they're all behavioral analysts, but, you know, it's, it's a really wonderful program. Yes. Have you heard of David Rosenhan's thought experiment? David Rosen? No, I have not. No. Okay. Well, first, I want to preface my comments by saying that the people, individuals who are the doctors in the medical and psychiatric professions are wonderful people, and they're seeking to help. But the medical system, which treats individuals in need of help, is a disaster.